Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with my ongoing WWE Network coverage of the NWO invasion of WCW back in 1996. The show that I watched yesterday was Fall Brawl 1996, otherwise known as War Games. Uh, it came from September of 1996. This was held in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, a.k.a. Horseman Country. And this was one of the biggest shows of uh, WCW's existence. Everybody's gone out, everybody's bought the War Games DVD uh, that WWE put out um, not that long ago. But, I mean, this was uh, the one thing that WCW always did every year to get everybody all fired up. War Games, they would set up two rings, have a cage set up around it, and have a four-on-four -four battle uh, where both teams brawled until somebody uh, submitted. Uh, basically, um, somebody had to give up, somebody had to wave the white flag saying, you know, we've been beat up enough, uh, we don't want to get beat up anymore, you are better than us. And uh, that is what they went out to do. Honestly, from re-watching uh, the uh, WCW Invasion, honestly, I know that they did war games every year at Fall Brawl, but it seemed like it was a little bit too early uh, for the WCW to be taking on the NWO uh, in a match like this for, you know, the, the they all say all. Um, I'm going to talk more about the War Games match than anything else from here. They had a whole bunch of matches that were on this show. The, the Giant fought Randy Savage in a, in, in a match before the main event. The Giant, of course, had, had jumped ship and he, and he had crossed over to um, the NWO. Um, they, they kept showing um, the, the Giants turn on the faces of fear uh, coming in there and Randy Savage was so pissed he ran down and gave the Giant one of the chif uh, stiffest chair shots to the back of the head. You know most of the time that when you come in and you're going to hit somebody with a chair you hit him in the back. But since the Giant was so big he was trying to you know make his swing way up and when he put his swing way up he cranked him right right in the back of the head. Oh man it looked, it looked horrible. Um, but basically... Uh, the Giant, you know, you know, fought Randy Savage. Savage was actually giving it to the Giant. He actually body slammed the Giant, and it looked like he was going to get the win. And at that moment, Hollywood Hogan showed up at the uh, ringside, and he was like, you're trying to goat Savage, and, 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 you know, into a fight. Savage, you know, wanted to fight Hogan, and uh, he got out of the ring. And the second when he got out of the ring, Hogan backpedaled all the way back up to the ramp. And when he got to the ramp, um, Scott Hall came out for a clothesline. Savage ducked it to turn to fight Scott Hall. And when he did that, Nash hit uh, Savage with a chair, uh, um, knocked him out. They dragged him down to the ring, and the giant pinned him. Um, just basically, it was kind of weird. Uh, seeing how you, basically the main event guys of the NWO, Hogan, Hall, and Nash, you know, they all, you know, stuck together. They wanted to help the Giant beat Randy Savage. But it was kind of weird that, you know, they would make a run-in in in the match before their match. And, you know, since WCW was all so together at the time, you know, where were Luger, Flair, and Anderson uh, to, to, you know, the, during this NWO invasion of this match that lasted two, three minutes? They didn't have time to get out of the uh, the locker room and try to help Randy out. It just, just was weird. Right after that, they immediately go to the back and talk to the guys. And I'm like, why the hell? You're obviously watching it because you're talking about the match that just happened in your promo. And they're asking, um, you know, Ric Flair, who the fourth man is going to be. The, the week before War Games, um, Sting had attacked Lex Luger out in the parking lot and then jumped ship to the NWO, it looked like. Of course, this was the uh, NWO Sting, a.k.a. the fake Sting. And during this promo, when they're trying to, to name who the fourth man is going to be, um, the, the fake Sting walks in and with his back to the camera, um, he's moving his arms and he's, and he, and he's uh, as they're doing it, they're piping in a Sting promo with a voiceover. The only problem is at one point, the fake Sting turns... To where you can see the side of his face, and words are coming out from the uh, voiceover of Sting, and the fake Sting's mouth's not moving. <laughs> so you obviously know that something's uh, not right. I don't know if everybody, um, you know, was able to catch on to that uh, when they were watching it, or if they were just so into like Sting's talking to Luger, trying to make him convince him that um, it wasn't him that did it. But War Games starts. Arn Anderson's uh, in there with Scott Hall, and they're battling it out. Uh, the, I, I like the fact that they have the live coin flip uh, in the back, and um, out comes Kevin Nash. And, and you know, of course, everybody knows with with um, 
War Games, of course, it starts two on two, and then every two minutes a man is released from the back, and the heel team's going to have the advantage. And um, it gets down to the end where there's um, Hogan, there's Hall, there's Nash, and they're fighting against Luger, Flair, and Anderson. And then the uh, fourth man from Team NWO is going to come out. And, of course, NWO Sting comes in, and they're battling, and they're fighting all around. And then the uh, the time limit goes off, and then the WCW bell comes off, and they're all, well, now, you know, nobody's going to come out. And then at the end, real Sting comes out. So now you have two Stings in the ring, and Sting on his own, uh, you know, beats up all of the NWO, leaves them laying, you know, he hits the... Um, uh, the this, this, this Stinger Splash, he gets the Scorpion Deathlock on two of the dudes, lays them all out, and then he gets in Luger's face, and he goes, is, is that enough proof for you? Uh, saying that he isn't the guy that, that beat up uh, Luger on Nitro. And, you know, as everybody's, like, sort of, like, trying to console Sting, he just gets out of the cage and walks to the back, uh, leaving the NWO with a four-on-three advantage inside of the ring, which they were able to uh, break it down. Uh, basically, um, the the fake Sting is able to put the Scorpion Deathlock on uh, on Lex Luger, and uh, he's forced to submit. It's funny as um uh, as as he's got the the Scorpion Deathlock on him, Hogan sort of got like this chin lock on him. And he's trying to make it look like it's one of the best chin locks in the world. Uh, Luger's um able to submit. This was always a really, really weird match. Honestly, everybody wanted it to be on TV. They've always had two rings, so you guys would have enough room to work. But honestly, it's kind of distracting because they have the two rings out there for the whole pay-per-view. And then when it comes down to war games, everybody started in the um, in the ring that was on the right-hand side. And at one time, Somebody went over to the left ring in order to get like a break and they were making it look like one of the heels was trying to leave the action and then everybody went over and started fighting in the left ring and then that was it. It was like they were only going to use it for that one spot. I know it's hard to fit everybody eight guys in a ring with one time with a cage around it, but you know, I would it just I just kept on thinking like what if you were the fan that was sitting front row but you were sitting on the opposite side and you were having to look through a ring that nobody was in that had a cage around it to watch the fight on the other side. When you're watching it, man, people are into it. Uh, they really, really uh, are, so I, I guess nobody really was complaining about it. You just were excited that you got a front row show. It didn't even seem like during the pay-per-view that they used, they would switch rings to make sure people were happy. It seemed like that one ring was the main ring, and, and, and that was it. Uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, World War Three. at that show. They had three rings. Uh, to, to have a, a Royal Rumble sort of deal with 90 guys, and we'll work our way to it. Halloween Havoc is next. Uh, they were really hyping up Savage versus Hogan. Of course, they had the run-in during the Hog uh, during the Savage and Giant match. Um, but uh, at the end of the show, Randy Savage came out to attack uh, Hogan. Of course, Ms. Elizabeth came running down, and they re uh, re upped the. Uh, Savage uh, and Elizabeth thing. I think a lot of the fringe viewers that were watching WCW at the time were people that were viewers in the 80s and hadn't known that uh, Savage and Elizabeth had gotten a divorce and I guess they were able to, to work together and uh, Elizabeth covered up Savage as he was laid out in the ring so they spray painted Elizabeth's dress with the NWO on it. Um, I don't know. This this was a good show. Uh, Ric Flair in a lot of shoot interviews has pointed out as this is the show that killed war games. Of course, North Carolina being you know not only uh, horseman country but WCW country, a, a place that they ran a lot of NWA shows back in the day with war games. War games was always the one where the good guys got the win to show people that you know have faith in us and we're going to be able to do it. And this was one of the first shows where the heels actually got the the win you know it's always supposed to be that you know the good guys are always going to come overcome any advantage but they really wanted to sink in the whole sting thing uh that you know sting felt like he was betrayed and this would you know start his um decline into the crow gimmick that Scott Hall gave gave him and um he would hang out in the rafters and of course he wouldn't fight for over a year he would show up and he'd kick the NWO's ass every once in a while, uh, show up and give him a scare, show up and give the crowd a pop on Nitro that, you know, even though he wasn't in the ring fighting, he was always watching. And um, I don't know if he wrestled house shows or if he did anything during this time, or if he just really just sat around and just got flown to shows to sit up in the rafters. Um, but, um, you know, when we finally get to Starcade 97... 
That's one of Sting's best matches. And it's not even for the in-ring work, just for the storyline that WCW's told. It made you really, really want to see somebody beat the NWO, especially for me, who is an NWO fan. But that's a year down the road. Halloween Havoc 96 will be the next show that I uh, I watch from the WCW land. It's been a lot of fun watching them like this. I think everybody's having fun on the WWE Network, reliving something uh, from their past. So this is mine. Peace out. Fall Brawl 96. Maybe just put it on, fast forward to the end, and just watch the war games. Because that's basically all you're really going to need to see. Once you get to there, I don't know if you want to keep continuing. But I'm having fun. NWO, baby. Peace out.